think it's so sad and so disgusting. And you also wonder about a government. Who can approve a thing like that? Would they take cash into a country and just hand it to them? Bushels and bushels of cash. That lower third, that's what we call it in the business, the lower third graphic on MSNBC during Trump's rally this afternoon. Portland, Maine, summed it up nicely. Quote, Trump says he watched non-existent video of Iran receiving cash. Trump isn't selectively fudging the truth. He made up a narrative about the Iran settlement. He didn't back away when it was debunked. It's fully an alternate reality. We know where it comes from. Philip Rucker pointed it out on this very show last night when he said that during his sit-down with Trump, the candidate, quote, was distracted during the interview. He routinely was looking at a television screen playing Fox News behind us. Joining me now to talk about how this kind of alternate universe is part of a larger foundational problem for the conservative movement that helped create Trump. Eric Bowler, senior fellow with Media Matters, and Betsy Woodruff, politics reporter at the Daily Beast, used to work for both the National Review and the Washington Examiner. And Betsy, let me start with you. I, I've started to see a lot of hand-wringing, very earnest hand-wringing, I should say, I, I, people genuinely kind of trying to reckon with, um, on the right, particularly the sort of conservative intellectual class that are in the Never Trumpers, about what, how did this happen? How did we create an alternate reality or a set of media institutions that were so powerful that they're completely um, inoculated from, from the facts <laughs> in a way that has allowed Trump to flourish? Well, the problem is that conservatism has flirted for too long with Conspiracy Theory, Inc. I mean, think about how often the Drudge Report links to sites like Sputnik News that are funded by the Kremlin or Infowars, which is an actual conspiracy theory site. So it shouldn't be surprising that Donald Trump, who's, Trump, who's pretty much a card-carrying conspiracy theorist, would find a big audience uh, that overlaps quite nicely with some folks in the conservative movement. And listen, when you think about Trump as someone who believes the world is governed by a cabal of puppet masters and insidious multinational globalists trying to undermine the American worker, and that we can't really understand the truth because of this vast, you know, media-driven conspiracy to keep the truth away from American voters, then everything about him kind of makes sense. It's understandable that he worries we don't know what's going on, that he wants to restore America to a really defensive crouch, that he wants to withdraw from the world, to withdraw from it, for instance, from the diplomatic progress we've made with Iran, to, with, to build a wall, to right. have ever higher trade barriers. It's kind of his worldview as a whole. It's how he thinks. And it's something that has been nurtured by many folks in conservative media, unfortunately. You know, back, back in 2007, I wrote a piece for The Nation, Eric, called uh, the, the NAFTA Superhighway. And it was this long piece in which I had heard about this, this NAFTA Superhighway. It was right, going right, to be, right. be four football fields wide. It was going to run from Canada down to Mexico, right through the heartland of the country. And, and there was all this panic about it. Republicans were getting asked about it at town halls. Conservative media, state legislatures were passing opposition to it. It didn't exist. Right. There was no such thing. And yet, this entire flourishing universe had, had grown up around this thing. And I right. keep thinking about that when I see Trump talking about, uh, you know, the, the tape of the Muslims cheering 9-11, uh, right? 9 right, 11, right. right? Or, or this tape of the unloading cash. Like, it didn't matter it didn't exist. They were able to kind of create this alternate world around it. Yeah, no, he, he, he continually crosses new markers, right? This is unusual in that his campaign step forward and debunk this, uh, this uh, Iranian video clip, and he then goes out and says it again. So he is saying, I'm in a bubble, no one can touch me, my campaign, no matter what anyone says, I'm going to do this. So, you know, in the past, the Republican Party kind of became unhinged from reality around policy, right? Climate change doesn't exist, unemployment numbers are faked under Obama, and people thought, well, this is crazy, but it was based on policy. Trump seems to be doing this to everyday life, right? You, when you see him talking on the video, talking about the video, you can see, almost see him conjuring up the image in his head while he's talking out loud and he's decided he's going to state it as fact so there's a conservative media that has been helping him nurturing right. creating this and now the mainstream media has to come to the realization that the republican party is that he's a pathological liar and no one well, signed up for that for a campaign there's also this crazy kind of gaslighting jedi mind trick thing that he constantly does and, and, and betsy we saw it with the melania speech right so clearly those there were some words in melania's speech sentences that were lifted whole cloth from a michelle obama speech uh, that was just evident to anyone. It was evident to anyone, no matter what their views of marginal tax rates or the balance between freedom and security. It was not like an ideological thing. And yet they made them all march out there, look in the camera, Sean Spicer, the RNC, all these people, and just pretend that the, what was obviously true wasn't obviously true. And I think that is like some new level that we've, re we've reached here. 
It's really weird. It's strange. It's kind of hard to get your head around the fact that we're almost in some ways operating in a post-fact political environment. Yeah. And you have to couple that with the fact that these news cycles move so quickly and also that I think in many cases we as reporters feel that we have to always give Trump the benefit of the doubt and always try to assume right. that maybe he's telling the truth, that maybe his surrogates have some sort of basis for what they're doing, which is why so many reporters spent a lot of time today looking for a video that didn't exist, right? Which is why so right, much journalistic right. manpower just went into finding a non-existent video of like Muslims <laughs> protesting 9-11. Right. That didn't exist. The burden is on Trump to produce evidence of his statements. Right. Uh, but in some ways, reporters have taken up that responsibility, and it's weird. I want to play this ultimate example of this, which is a new ad they're running against Hillary Clinton. Take a look. I'm telling you right now, we're going to write fairer rules for the middle class, and we are going to raise taxes on the middle class. And we are going to raise taxes on the middle class. That is an official video put out of the campaign. She very clearly says, aren't, aren't <laughs> going to raise taxes. No, no one gets up and says, we are going to raise taxes on the middle class, first of all. But, and gets a and, cheer. And they just... Uh, right. So this is, so is kind of like, you know, Breitbart got in trouble because they just this day, they, they put the wrong photo. They said this is a huge rally for Trump, and it turns out it was a rally for the Cavaliers when they came home from the NBA championship. And you laugh at that, and you laugh at Alex Jones, and he's running for president. So I go back to my... My point earlier, no one signed up for this, right? To cover a presidential campaign. Right. Nobody thought they were gonna cover a pathological liar. And now all the rules, none of them apply, and the fact checking isn't gonna work. Everyone's gotta sort of respond. Aren't. It was aren't, just for the record, aren't. Eric Bowler, Betsy Woodruff, thank you both.